Awesome. Hi, Lawrence. How are you doing? Great. Um, Except for the fact that when I, I don't usually spend this much time like having to look at myself and I feel like I look like a character Mike Judge would make fun of. <laughs> well, I can, I can definitely relate. Maybe not quite Mike Judge, but definitely, <laughs> definitely someone else. Um, I, I watched the film again earlier today and I am like still struck upon watching it just that shift in the middle and I I loved it and the performances were incredible the script was incredible and I'm just really grateful to be able to speak to you today oh, awesome. um, thanks of course uh so just to kind of jump right in how did you come up with the main idea behind the film um oof, it's 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 such a long circuitous kind of path uh but um but I guess it started with I had been doing a lot of work for hire as a writer um, in Hollywood, more traditional kind of stuff uh, for producers and um, studios and networks and, and everything. It was a much more constricted kind of work, uh, more collaborative, everything's very workshopped. Um, structure is uh, of, of paramount importance. And um, I was tired of it, uh, even though it, it was remunerative and, um, and interesting. I was kind of tired of it and I knew that I wanted to do something um, wilder, more creative with a different type of structure. And around that time, I uh, got cast in a, in a TV show opposite of Aubrey uh, called Easy. And I got to know her a little bit and I was really struck by her work ethic and also the fact that she was a really great dramatic actress and I didn't think that a lot of people had seen that side of her. So I thought it'd be really um, interesting to work with her and great if I could, could think of an idea for, her to, for a movie for her to be in. And um, also around that time, a friend of mine showed me some pictures of this camp that his family uh, had on the Adirondacks, on a lake on the, in the Adirondacks. And um, he kind of suggested that I shoot something there. Um, so those three things were kind of going on at the same time. And um, I, I knew also that I wanted to try and tell the story in two parts. And I knew that I wanted to keep things simple so that the movie would be inexpensive and we'd have a better chance of getting it made. So I thought it'd be interesting to do um, story of two two love triangles one in which aubrey was the was the cheater and one in which she was cheated on and um and that the other characters their roles would adjust accordingly that it would always be played by the same uh three actors uh and other than that um i I can't really exactly say i know that i had a dream that had a vibe that was very similar to part one and when I finished it, I recalled that I had written an outline 10 years earlier um, uh, that was based on some conversations that I had with a filmmaker and his actress girlfriend. Distinct conversations, one in which she said she was resentful of her boyfriend for not putting her in movies. And I had another uh, in which he said he was resentful for her always badgering him to put her in movies. I thought it'd be interesting if he said, okay, fine, we'll do a movie, but made, it, made her life miserable while they were on set. So about 10 years ago, I had that idea for a story and it kind of came out of, an outline came out of me really fast. And when I looked at part one, uh, I remembered that outline and I thought, oh, this is a, a love triangle that would make an interesting pair with the first part. Um, so it was kind of a long, weird process that culminated in the film that you see. Um, well, it's obviously a very long and successful process too. Uh, and Thanks. I love that. It's nice to hear that it kind of started around Aubrey as well. But mm -hmm. what was the rest of the casting process, especially for Christopher and Sarah, just to kind of round out that triangle? Yeah, I mean, Chris and Sarah were my first choices for the other roles. So the, the casting process was pretty simple in that way. I was just lucky that they did it. Um, Aubrey was also a producer on the film and enlisted the help of her agent, a guy named Chris Andrews, who um, also reps Sarah. And, uh, and um, luckily she wanted to do the project, which she was perfect for. And um, I'd been wanting to work with her for years since I saw her in Indignation. And then Chris, I'd also wanted to work with for years. And I'd even asked him to be uh, in another movie that I was trying to get made. And he said, no, but I, uh, 
I, I didn't give up and I tried again and he, he did this one. So it was very fortunate. And I think the film too, just the intimate, like the first part is obviously almost like a play, just the intimacy between the three of them. Um, but it, it really is an acting showcase for each of them in all different facets. Uh, but the film itself has such a strong kind of aesthetic style throughout and between the score and just the cinematography, what were kind of your filmic references or inspirations heading into writing and directing this film? Um, I feel like I was, I was most free of direct influences on this film than uh, any of my previous films in which I really had models in mind that were pretty direct. Um, my, my film Gabby on the Roof in July was really inspired by John Cassavetti's Shadows. And uh, my next film, Wild Canaries, was um, very influenced by Woody Allen, Blake Edwards, and, and Blake Edwards. Uh, so I had those really directly in my mind. This was the one, the first movie that I made where I really felt like it was my own, um, which is a good feeling. That being said, um, certainly uh, when I watch it, I can see uh, my, my love for Fellini's Eight and a Half, um, I, my love for Woody Allen's Husbands and Wives, uh, and John Cassavetti's Faces, um, Bergman's Persona, uh, Jean-Luc Godard's crazy self-reflexive films, um, Slow Motion probably being my favorite of the bunch, um, and uh, Hong Sang-so, South Korean filmmaker who uh, builds these uh, very intricate and um, unusual surrealistic worlds with the most basic tools. So I, I think, you know, those are the, when I watch it, and Bunuel uh, comes to mind, with his film, The Obscure Object is of Desire, where characters swing strange place without explanation and, and everything. So those are the ones that kind of jump to mind when I think about, uh, I think about um, the influences and also probably Elaine May. Her, her film, uh, Mikey and Nikki, is, is um, just a favorite of mine, that jittery, lifelike energy and the sponta spontaneity of performance. Um, I do obviously want to speak about the premiere at Sundance. It feels like so long ago now, um, but just kind of this film coming out during 2020 in the year of the pandemic and then shifting very quickly to being on a digital festival circuit. How has that kind of, I guess, affected your experience this year? Um, between like Nightstream and Montclair coming off of Sundance too? Yeah, it's disappointing. Um, in some ways it's disappointing not to be able to have the movie play in, in theaters. I think that's the way that I intended for it to be experienced. And the intensity and dreamlike atmosphere of the film, I worry will be like really, really mitigated by the home viewing experience where you can be easily distracted. <laughs> Um, so that's a disappointment. Uh, on the other hand, um, I think in the streaming era, more people will see this movie than it had, if it had come out in the 90s or early 2000s. So, so that's a good thing. Uh, more people will see it. They won't have the ideal viewing experience. And, um, you know, it's, it would have been nice to be able to travel the world uh, in support of my film. But uh, I guess I'll just have to wait. Um, and just looking ahead a little bit to next year, are there any other projects you have on the horizon that you're open to sharing or what do you have in store for yourself just in general? Um, yeah, I, I'm currently at work on, on several new things. Um, I'm, I've been working with um, my wife, Sophia, a lot again. And um, we have, I don't know if I'm at liberty to talk about these things, but we definitely have, uh, I, I, we have two projects that, um, that she's set to direct that I wrote that I'm very excited about. And then I'm also working on a script of my own. So, uh, so still, still going. Very exciting and hopefully in person once those yeah. are on the circuits as well. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for speaking with me today. And that's kind of it from my end. All right, I appreciate it, Samantha. Of course, thank you. Of course, have a good one.